Hello everybody, welcome to That's Football. I'm Mark Goldbridge and I tell you what, it's happening. With the transfer window about to close, we are about a day and a half away from a Premier League title race that I think is more wide open than it's ever been and that is all that we want. Specifically, I'm talking about the activity of Manchester City and why they may well have opened up the door because of these potential issues that they've got around the 1-1-5. They've not been as active as you would expect for a team that got knocked out of the Champions League last year and it could be Pep's last year. I expected two or three big players to come in, maybe even a Bruno Gomez. They've not done it. And Alvarez going with Savinho and Gundogan coming in, I'm not quite sure they're strong enough to just run away with this Premier League. Hear me out. Get your comments in below. Really want to know what your thoughts are on this. And look, maybe, just maybe, it opens the door for somebody else to get involved in this title race as well if Arsenal aren't up to it. But specifically, I think it is about one injury to Haaland and Man City are vulnerable. They're not going to fall away out of the top four. They'll still be in a title race. But I think that as things stand now, I'm very surprised about how Man City are one of the biggest players in this huge reduction in spend in the Premier League this season. Why is that? Have you got a theory? Do you think it is because they're a little bit worried about how this court case might be going? I don't know. I don't know. But I look at Manchester City and there is no doubt that with Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan back, Phil Foden, Bernardo Silva, Rodri, the defence is very strong. They've got the know-how and they still are my pick to win the Premier League. But... There's just something about them that I just think there is an air of vulnerability to them. They're all also going to go for the Champions League with two extra games. Pep takes things like the Carabao Cup seriously, the FA Cup seriously. I think that a couple of injuries and they could be vulnerable. And that situation for an Arsenal or a Liverpool is very interesting and that's what I want to talk about but before we do that um, let's just remind you the Super 6 is up and running get involved in that also want to talk about the transfer window and a FIFA legend that's heading to the Premier League by the way but um, Super 6 we've got our own Super 6 league with That's Football the code is That's 6 get involved with it um, all you need to do is head over to the Super 6 app Enter your six score predictions for the weekend and the mini, the money could be yours. Remember, we were watching the Liverpool game on Sunday. There was one player who was one goal away from the million, which wasn't won. So it rolls over again. You could win the big play. But also in our league, we have £100 to give away each week as well. The six games this week are Leicester Villa, Everton Bournemouth, Forest Wolves, West Ham Man City, Newcastle Spurs and Man United Liverpool. Get your score predictions in for those. If you get an exact score, you get five points. If you get the, the result, I think you get one point for that. At the moment, in relation to our league, I'm in the top 200, but it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm in the top 200 with 27 points. But at the moment, the leader is Matt Croft and Edward Abercumble with 38 points. Well done to you. And our winner from last week was David Worthington. Um, uh, well done to them as well. But you can get involved and play against us. Links in the description. Scan the QR code. The code is that six. Good luck and get involved with that. I'm not going to tell you what I'm predicting, but I am going to go with West Ham to beat Man City. Hear me out. Hear me out. That's what we're talking about. I think that there is. I do. I really, really do think that this transfer window is about to slam shut. Clearly, we're not going to get a striker for Arsenal, but we're also not going to get that big statement signing for Manchester City. And I feel it's a bit as a, as you were. And look, if Liverpool had got Zubamendi and what they had last season with Klopp, I think maybe they could have given a bit of a push. I don't think it's possible for a Spurs or a Villa or a Man United or a Chelsea or a Newcastle to get in a title race. But maybe Liverpool could bridge that gap, especially if they beat United at the weekend. That'd be a very confident start for them. And it's really about Man City and Arsenal. But as I said, hear me out. What is it about Man City that makes them the indomitable force in the Premier League, the juggernaut? It's the know-how. It's the, it's the players that have been there and done it, like Rodri, like John Stones, etc. And I think that, that, is, that that's what makes them so, so, so good. But I also think that when you look at what they've got and how they do it, 
there is a vulnerability there. You know, they are, I, I've got West Ham to beat them at the weekend. People will say that's crazy. If it actually actually happens, I'll look very, very good. But I just think Alvarez was a really interesting player to sell and not replace. And I know that this Savio or Savino or have you, however you pronounce it is a good player and they've got Doku and they've got Silva and they've got Grealish and they've got Foden and they've got De Bruyne and they've got Rodri and they've got that defence and they've got that team that knows how to do it. But... We know what happens when Rodri doesn't play. They're not as good. And if Haaland gets a problem, I mean, you're basically asking Erling Haaland to play 60, 70 games and score every week. And that won't happen. He will get injured and he will have to get rotated out and they will have to play with a false nine or something else like that. And it probably will work. But if enough teams can get at Man City and look perhaps beyond their invincibility and look at their vulnerabilities, I just have this feeling... And it's totally to do with this transfer window that it was two points between Arsenal and Man City last year. And if one of Arsenal and Liverpool or both can find some consistency to stay with them, then maybe this is the year where Man City show a bit of fragility because their their eyes off the ball a little bit, focusing on other things. Exclusively, my point is, they haven't gone into this transfer window and gone boom like they normally do. Normally, Man City do a couple of signings and you go, oh God, they've just added that to what was already a good team. But as I said, I just think up front, they've got the best striker in the world. But if anything happens to him, you know, it's, it's a different story, isn't it? They are still going to be a fantastic side. But I just think it could happen. I think that this summer transfer window from Manchester City is not as strong as you would expect. They have got the revenues. They have got the money to just go and drop £100 million on Bruno Gomerez or on somebody else, and they haven't really done it. They've taken Savio from a club they already own, and they've brought Gundogan back on a free. Very good signings, but I just think there is an opportunity there. And with Arsenal playing Man City very, very soon, is this the year where we see the change? Because I think the Premier League is fantastic. I really, really do. I think we've got such a good race around third to fourth, especially with the likes of Chelsea and Newcastle and Spurs and Villa and hopefully Man United. But it's that title race and relegation race that makes the Premier League a little bit boring. And um, I think I think it could happen. Get your comments in on that. Hear me out. Well, I hope you have. Um, also, just want to drop this in as well. Uh, very, very interesting story. Uh, I'm probably going to get his name completely wrong, but um, he's going to Crystal Palace. Uh, his name is Lacroix. Uh, he plays for Wolfsburg, and if you've played a bit of FIFA over the last three years, you've probably signed him a few times, and he's actually coming to the Premier League in real life. So, a bit of a FIFA legend there, um, and he is coming to the Premier League to play for Crystal Palace, who have had a bad start to the season, but may well be active themselves in the last couple of win uh, couple of days. Look, get in the comments. Do you think your, your club's going to do anything in these last, you know, 48 hours? We've got the Champions League draw coming up a little bit later as well, but... All in all, look, I want to get on with the football now. I think the transfer windows, as a Man United fan, it's had its ups. But in a general sense, I think it's been a bit stale. Um, the big question will be, should Arsenal have bought a striker? The big question in this is, have Man City done enough? Uh, obviously, they're favourites, but have they got enough if a couple of injuries happen again? And also, Liverpool, all right, Chiesa, we spoke about. But they've. I'll tell you what it is. Hear me out on this. Liverpool needed a holding midfielder like Zimmermendi. Arsenal needed a goal-scoring striker like Isaac or Watkins or Gio Kerez or Tony or someone like that. And Man City needed to replace Alvarez. All three clubs, not one of them, has done the obvious thing. And if one of them had, would that be the bump to put them above the other two? We'll see. Get your comments in. Smash a like on the video and subscribe. Don't forget to play Super 6. It's getting exciting. Links in the description. Free to play as well. You could be winning our league and the big prize too. Take care. I'll speak to you in a bit.